These are five most important questions that people are asking in React interviews. The single most important question is what are benefits of React? And actually it is super important because it directly shows your knowledge and understanding what were the ideas behind React and what problems it is solving. And there are two typical incorrect answers to this question. First of all, people keep saying, OK, we are writing GS6 inside React and this is much cooler than HTML. And secondly, people are answering something like, OK, React is cool because of Virtual DOM. And actually, this is the correct answer, but it is lacking the context. So here are several important things to mention. First of all, before JavaScript, we typically did a lot of updates with DOM, because we need in different places of our application to work with DOM directly. Secondly, we have multi-flow of data, which means from different parts of our application, we were sending some signals to update DOM, for example, or just to communicate between projects. React, on the other hand, is working as a tree of components, which means we have only a single flow of data from top to the bottom. Also, we don't work anymore with DOM directly. We simply change the state inside React and React re-renders the whole application. But actually, it won't be fast if React will re-render the whole real DOM. This is why we are coming in Virtual DOM idea. Actually, Virtual DOM is the representation of real DOM inside JavaScript. And it is much better because it is faster to calculate the differences between old state of DOM and new state of DOM directly inside JavaScript. And then React just updates inside real DOM what is needed to be updated. The second most popular question is the difference between class components and functional components. And here you need to tell that we have two approaches in React. First of all, we work with classes and this is all the React approach. Also, we can create our components as functions, and previously functional components were completely stateless, so we didn't have state inside. But after React introduced hook, now with the component use state, we can have state inside our React functional components. Also, you should mention here that inside classes we have lifecycle methods and we can make some changes by using them. Inside functional components we don't have any lifecycle methods. The second super popular question is what are the difference between smart components and dump components, and they are also called controlled components or uncontrolled components. And here you should tell that in dump components we don't have any state. We normally just get some props from our parent and then we have inside business logic or simply render some view. Smart components on the other hand have inside state and just give dump components some data from the state. And then the next question that you will get is when we need to use dump component and when we need to use smart component. And the correct answer here, it depends. You can't really tell when you need to use what. Actually, it depends on architecture, how you are planning your application and what you want from it. But there are some hints to understand that your architecture is not best. If you need to pass prop three levels to your children just to make your components dump, it doesn't make much sense. Then it's just better to make that component smart. But it doesn't make sense to make all your components smart. For example, if you are rendering a list of 1000 element, you don't want to subscribe to state or some store in all these 1000 elements, because it won't be really fast. This brings us to the next question regarding state inside components. And here you need to tell that when we are using classes, we have inside this property state where we can store our state. If we are talking about functional components, we can use useState hook here and store our state there. If we want to pass data between parent and child, we are using their props or callbacks for this. And also there are some advanced way to work with states such as Redux or React Context for example. Which will for sure trigger the next question, what is React context, Redux and what state management ideas you have. Also, they might ask you what is the difference between Redux and React context. And the most popular incorrect answer here is that we don't need to use Redux anymore, Redux is dead because we have React context. And actually it's not correct, first of all because Redux is built on the top on React context, which means it is a wrapper around React context with some architecture of working with state. So inside Redux you are getting high level scalable architecture through actions, reducers and single global state. 
Also Redux super popular as a state management and completely React agnostic, which means we have an implementation of Redux inside Angular as NGRX package, and we also have Vuex with the same ideas inside Vue ecosystem. And the most popular question that you can get about Redux is why reducers should be immutable. And this question directly shows how deep you know Redux, because actually the only way to understand that your state was changed is to make deep comparison of two objects. And actually this is really slow to make this. This is why React doesn't do it. It simply compares the two objects, the old state and the new state, are referenced the same thing. And if they are, this means the state was not changed. Which actually means that we must return new object every single time when we work with reducers. In other case, Redux can't really work correctly. And here is a bonus question for you, which is really popular in the last several years. People keep asking how we can bring type checking inside React ecosystem. And you need to answer here that the most popular solution nowadays is TypeScript. And this is really de facto solution for production, which is really stable and battle tested. The other solution which is doing the same thing is called Flow, but it is not that much used nowadays. And the main point in these two solutions is to avoid runtime errors, because we are getting our errors in console when we are transpiling our TypeScript or Flow code for example. But if you need really something lightweight and you don't want to use TypeScript for your application, you can just take a package which is called PropTypes. This is runtime check for your properties inside components, so you can really validate what you are passing inside components. And if you are passing something wrong, you will get runtime errors. So these were 5 most popular React questions that you will for sure get on your interviews. Also, if you want to know 5 must-know JavaScript questions for interview, don't forget to check this video.